Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some beautiful oxeye daisies. So grab your paints and let's get started. So here we have this wonderful um, tangle of really large daisies um, and they've got these incredible yellow centers. I mean, we're all familiar with daisies but they do come in a variety of forms and the oxeye daisy is a wild a large variety that um, we just happen to have growing in our garden at the moment. Um, these lovely little leaves that sort of go down the stems. Um, but the thing I really love, like I said, is this sort of tangled effect. So uh, we need to get some paints mixed up and uh, various bugs and flies off my bit of paper. So we are going to need a, a white a white colour for our petals and um, anyone who follows this channel will have seen me paint a number of white petals and I do it using a very very diluted version of a shadow mix so I use Burnt Sienna, Payne's Grey and that with added water becomes nice and pale but then I also like to add in a little bit of a yellowy green so the green gold is a great one um, or you could always use a little bit of cadmium yellow sap green but essentially what we're looking for is a very very diluted colour that has just a hint of the sort of other colours going on in that plant just add a tiny bit of French ultramarine blue um, but adding enough water to that means that when it dries on the page it's going to be really translucent and it will crisp up and the edges will form these very neat crisp petals um, and then the other colours I want I'm going to get sap green for our stems but we'll mix in a little bit of green gold to get that nice yellowy green and then up here already in my palette I have a mixture of sap green and cadmium yellow that I use quite a lot so I mean I'm sure that there is a colour ready mixed out there that gives me this colour but sometimes if you've got spare wells in your palette it's actually a really good idea if you have a colour that you use loads that is one of your own mixes why not just get it like give it its own palette well itself right we'll get the colours mixed up and we need to draw in some stems so one last look at these that lovely tangle and I'm going to put them to one side I'm going to begin with a nice wobbly stem really wobbly and then I'm going to find places to put in some flowers so we've got we're going to have a daisy there we'll have a we'll have an open faced one and we'll have one that is looking upwards so for open faced flowers I put a circle in uh, that one we're going to sort of see a three quarter angle so I've put in more of an oval and for one facing sort of off and away from us I've put in a little sort of U shape that is going to um, define where the stem turns into the flower and I like to extend the line up a bit just to help me uh, see exactly where my stems and flowers are headed okay so I'm now going to start painting in the petals. Um, a size zero brush will work quite nicely. I might just actually go down a few into my two tenths just to get a little bit more control. And um, I'm just going to sacrifice one of my daisies. Here we go. So we can see there's an awful lot of petals um, all layered up. So it's not just a single layer of petals here. So what we're going to do is we'll start with the open face flower first, that seems to be the easiest. I'm going to use that circle as the sort of anchor point for my petals to go in. So you can see I'm painting with this very dilute colour. I'm really taking my time over this first petal because I want to get you a really nice shape on it. It's a sort of elongated teardrop and I am going to paint in petals that have been spaced apart so they're not going to touch each other 
always overlapping into the middle. Don't worry if they're not all exactly the same length. It's kind of the beauty of these petals, these daisy petals. Uh, there's a lovely sort of wild quality to them that they're not all exactly sort of angled the same. So I'm just going to go round the circle, painting in one round of spaced petals. The next flower here, I've angled the actual daisy. If you're looking from above, you'll see that we see um, just the very sort of uh, tips of the petals here and we see them elongated there and we do see the yellow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the back row of petals same as before sort of spaced out because we will be adding in another row of petals. And then down in front, we're going to struggle with not overlapping things. So for now, I'm just going to place in just sort of a few dabs of the white colour to just sort of make up the beginning of that. Well, I think the dogs are barking, I do apologise. Um, now if we look at this one up here, I've got a, oh, this is just amazing, this is a daisy that hasn't sort of opened quite as much. The incredible base is this really intricate green, but it's more that I want to sort of focus on how it sort of goes out quite flat and then up come the petals. So I am going to paint petals in from there. Again, spaced out so they're not touching each other. And you can see, even though it's faint, that they are crisping up and starting to reveal themselves nicely there. And you could add, if you wanted, sort of a, a one or two just sort of bending off the side there. Okay, so we'll let those dry 100% and add in a second layer. Now these have all dried completely, I'm going to go back in and paint Uh, another layer of petals over the top. Now I do have in my uh, in my book New Botanical Painting a daisy project that is very similar. Um, so and and of course there are so many different flower projects in there. So if you're enjoying this style of painting, this kind of I call it um, controlled loose painting because I am um, not so detailed that this is a true botanical study but it's definitely got more sort of precision and, and layering than a purely loose piece so controlled loose one of my followers coined that term actually and I'm very grateful to you one of my subscribers because uh, it really does sum it up kind of perfectly So this is really funny, I can hear the, the dogs desperately wanting to bark. I think the postman's here or something. Um, and, and poor Ant, his job whilst I'm filming is to keep them quiet. <laughs> and they just they just love it. Actually, I'm gonna say hold on till the end of the video for, for a fun little appearance from one of our four-legged friends. Because um, of course we have two these days. Okay, so you can see as that dries, that is going to turn into a lovely set of crisp petals. But we're, we're still sort of not done for detail on, on the actual petals themselves. Um, so you can see here, I'm just adding in more layers. I'm 
you can do them in a single stroke if you want, and one or two can be a bit more wayward. And now, just a few extra little petals here and there, just looping out, and the same with that one there. So we'll let these dry, and we can move on to the stems. Now to paint stems, we've got options. We could use the rigger brush here, um, which is the long slender bristled stem uh, brush, or we could just use one of our sort of little control miniature brushes. I think I will try out the rigger to begin with. So up here I've got my sap green mixed with cadmium yellow, which is my lighter green. And then down here I've got sap green mixed with green gold. I'm going to begin with the lighter mix first and starting from the bottom using the rigger I hold the brush quite vertically and then just allow it to sort of bend away from me and what is quite cool is I want to sort of do two parallel lines that, that join at points and remain parallel at other points just so we get a very little bit of sort of light and shade with the stem and then what we can do I might just add in a little bit of that darker colour with my little miniature four tenths brush it's not a lot darker, but it does make a little bit of a difference. Um, there's a slight texture, a slight sort of um, lined ridge texture on the stem. Which can be nice to just pick out with that darker colour. So I'm going to paint in the rest of my stems now, doing the same technique. And you'll want to decide whether which stem sort of overlaps in front or behind. So we'll get these painted in and then add a few little leaves. The leaves on the stems are very small and they've got a sort of long central section. A little bit like the petals themselves. And then they have just a few little, little sort of side leaves. That one coming around the back. So I'm using a size zero brush to start and I'm using my stronger green mix and then I just like the control of the four tenths brush you might not always see all of the leaf they definitely seem to be around whenever there's a sort of junction of a new bit of stem growing and you can sort of blend them down into the stem and then they do get a little smaller as you go up so you could use just the four tenths brush. Um, these brushes that I'm using you can buy from my web shop And the rigger brush as well, we sell that now as well. There we go. So we're getting oh we're getting through it, aren't we? So now let's have a look at the underside of these daisies. I'm gonna begin with the lighter green because we do see a whole underside here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my four tenths brush to create the edge of the sepals 
There we go. And I'm going to let that just settle in, let that dry. In the meantime, we can turn this over and have a look at the amazing yellow centre. Um, cadmium yellow is a great yellow for this, but I think it also could do with a bit of orange. So we'll mix up some cadmium orange as well. This is one of those rare projects where you can probably get away with using the same water jar throughout just because the colours just seem to, they start really light and then they get stronger and stronger but they just continue along the same side of the palette with the yellows, oranges and greens. I have my two tenths brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in lots of little dots of yellow I'm going to go a bit larger than the the guiding circle that I did draw in, but it's very useful to have there. In painting in these dots, even though they're all touching, we are creating a bit of texture, whether we realise we're doing it or not. And just try and sort of go in in concentric circles. I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of the orange and it will start to bleed and blend into the yellows. And that's a lovely bit of sunshine in the middle of that flower. Now for this one here I'm going to use my four tenths brush because it is going to be just a bit more precise to the point where I'm actually going to begin by just marking out where the petals from in front will conceal the daisy centre and then I can start drawing in the dots. By now our green up here will be dried, so I'm just going to mix up a bit of that green gold green. And I'm going to paint in some more sepals in the gaps. Blend that down. So we're very nearly there with everything, but now we want to look at just the last little bits of detail. I'm actually going to go back to this little petal shadow mix and just make a slightly stronger version of it, only a tiny bit stronger. And also to get in a little bit of that green. Because what I'm going to do now is give some of our white daisy petals just a tiny bit more colour. And we're just going to add it to the bottom side. coming out from the centre of the flower. Just a few lines here and there. Thank you. 
and that just helps give the petals just a bit more definition and then here we can give them a few coming out from there but also just a few sort of lines from here to just help establish where the petals have, have sort of ended up. Okay, so we'll let everything dry and do last little bits. For the last part, I am mixing up <clears throat> a much stronger shadowy colour here, Payne's Grey, Burnt Sienna and a little bit of Sap Green because I am going to use it now to add just the little bits of interest and sort of low lights to areas of the stem. So using my four tenths brush, I'm just going around looking for little areas where I can add in that little bit of darkness. So, so obvious places like the where the stem comes away from underneath the flowers or underneath another stem, then we can have little bits on the leaves and then also up here we can actually use it to outline the sepals And then if I water it down just a little bit further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just do a few little dots. Well, not even dots, just kind of little sort of low light accents just sort of across the bottom of some of these, some of these dots and then in the middle, because there is a little dip on the daisy. And yeah, you could just sort of keep finding little places to keep adding some bits here and there, but of course half the of lesson with watercolour is, is learning where to stop. So I think that seems like a really nice place to stop. Um, we can just rub out the pencil and that is our oxeye daisy. Um, Crumble wanted to come in and say thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. Did you enjoy that Crumble? jury's out. Well, if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if they never want to miss another video, where do they go? Well, they hit the subscribe button. Crumbles no help. I'll see you again next time.